morning, everyone. Uh, we will be starting in about two minutes. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar, Facilitating Your Access to Global Talent, Programs and Supports for Employers. My name is Sangeeta Subramanian. I am the Senior Manager of Workplace Development here at the Immigrant Employment Council of DC. I will be your moderator today, and it is my great pleasure to welcome our guest speakers, Heather Michel, Employer Liaison Network Officer with Immigration, Refugees, and Citizenship Canada. Welcome, Heather. Caroline Berger, Project Manager, Immigration and Employment with the Economic Development Society of BC. Welcome, Caroline. And Rob Henderson, President and CEO of BioTalent Canada. Welcome, Rob. Before we begin our session, I'd like to provide you with a brief overview of our webinar format. We will have our speakers present for about 45 minutes, so about 15 minutes per speaker, and then we will have about 15 minutes at the end for questions from you, the audience. Please feel free to type and send your questions at any time during the presentations. There should be a chat window at the bottom of your screen that you can use to send us your questions. All webinar participants will be able to access the webinar recording, and we will also send you a PDF of today's presentations after the webinar. At the end of the session, you will be asked to provide feedback about today's webinar through a short survey. And last but not the least, please use the webinar dialogue panel should you have any technical difficulties. So well, let's get started. I'm sure many of you have already heard that Canada and British Columbia are going to depend on immigration for meeting our skill shortages over the next decade or so. Did you know that in the next 10 years, over 900,000 job openings are projected in BC? Well over 60% of them are due to retirements. And about a third of these, or about 27% of these, will need to be filled through migration. Employers now have to cast their net wider to meet their workforce needs, and immigrants represent one of the talent pools they can successfully tap into. In fact, without immigration, like I said, almost a quarter million jobs will go unfilled in BC alone. 
I'm sure that many of you are interested in hearing about how Canada's immigration system can be used to support your workforce and human capital needs. Joining us now is Heather Michaud. In her role as the Employer Liaison Officer, Heather provides up-to-date information on temporary and permanent immigration programs and express entry. Heather holds a BA and MA from the University of Calgary, and she started her career at Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada as a Foreign Service Officer in 2000, and has worked in several visa offices overseas, including Beirut, Singapore, New Delhi, Colombo, Seattle, Nairobi, and Rabat. As you can see, Heather's quite the world traveler. Over to you, Heather. Thank you very much for that very kind introduction. Um, before I get started with the slide presentation, I want to let all participants know that there's really only two pieces of information that they need to take away from this presentation. So all you need to remember, folks, is number one, that government policies and programs are subject to change. So you need to know where to go to get the most up-to-date program information before actually submitting any kind of immigration uh, application or work permit application to IRCC. So I'm going to explain that to you. Um, the, the second most important thing that you need to take away from this presentation is who to ask your questions of. So there will be questions um, as you go through the immigration process uh, for skilled workers who you want to hire into jobs in Canada. Um, the most important thing is where do you go to get the information that you need? Uh, to help you to navigate what is admittedly a complex process. So let's start out uh, with the first slide. So um, I'm just wondering if any of you have asked yourselves this kind of question. Um, have you asked yourself how the immigration system can be used to support your hiring needs? Have you wanted to help? Uh, or a national who works for you to become a permanent resident of Canada? And do you know where to turn for resources to help you to uh, understand and navigate the process? All information about federal immigration programs is available online at uh, the website canada.ca slash immigration. And all you need to do really is just go to www.canada.ca and type in search terms and it will take you directly to the topic that's of interest to you, whether that's work permits or, for example, the skilled worker immigration program. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is just a quick summary. I won't dwell on this, but this is... Uh, Explaining what I am, um, I am one of several um, employer liaison officers who are situated in IRCC offices across Canada who are available to help employers to understand and use various immigration programs. And uh, we're here, we can be reached uh, at any time using a single point of contact, uh, the email address that you see at the bottom of the screen, which is e e engagement at cic.gc.ca. So um, that's a very important email address to keep in your back pocket as you are uh, preparing to hire um, foreign trained or foreign national skilled workers for your organizations. Next slide, please. All right, so here's just a quick snapshot of the various immigration programs that are available to you um, through the federal program. So we've got temporary programs, which are used to fill temporary skill shortages that you may experience. And it's a good way to bring in people quickly under either the temporary foreign worker program, the international mobility program, or the most recent offering of the federal immigration program, which is the global skills strategy. I'll touch more on that in a minute. And we've also got a suite of permanent resident programs, 
um, which are managed, uh, the applications to those programs are all managed through a single system called Express Entry, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail. We also have a program called Startup Visa for immigrant entrepreneurs. Next slide, please. So while waiting for the next slide, I'll just um, move right along. Uh, the next slide actually contains some uh, links. And uh, because this presentation will be uh, made available to you following the webinar, uh, you can click on these links and, and get directly to the information that you need to hire foreign workers. Um, all of the links to the various work permit programs are available on the IRCC website at the link at the top. And there is a really useful resource, which is just a treasure trove of information about hiring and retaining internationally trained workers. And that's the employer's roadmap, which is also available on the Canada.ca website. So keep those links uh, on hand, bookmark them, and uh, they will be very, very useful to you. Next slide, please. Okay, and I'm sure that uh, if you do work with foreign nationals in your organization or just if you meet with them out in society, they may be asking you, okay, where do I go to get the information that I need to figure out which immigration program is the right one for me? So um, on the uh, IRCC website is a tool called the Come to Canada tool. It's really just a series of questions that direct people um, uh, through to uh, a list of all of the options for which they would be eligible for, for different kinds of visas, temporary and permanent. So this is a very useful resource, the Come to Canada tool, to which you can certainly direct your um, employees or prospective employees or just people in the community who are asking about immigration. Next slide, please. So this is just a title page. We're going to move along now to talk about temporary work permits. Next slide. Okay, so I mentioned that there are two main programs um, plus a pilot project uh, to bring in temporary workers. So these are to fill immediate um, skill shortages that you may have, vacancies that can only be filled by um, foreign nationals because you simply cannot find a Canadian citizen or permanent resident who has the skill set that you need, who is able and willing to do the job. Most of the time when you want to hire a foreign national, you'll need to first go through the labor market impact assessment process. This is an application that's made to Service Canada, and once they approve uh, the LMIA, as it's called, your candidate can then go ahead and apply to IRCC for their work permit. So that's how most employers will typically bring in uh, foreign workers uh, in the first place. There are a number of foreign workers, however, who are eligible um, for LMIA exempt work permits under something called the International Mobility Program. Um, for these types of cases, which include exemptions for, uh, for example, uh, francophones under a, a francophone mobility program, uh, exemptions under the International Experience Canada program, or under free trade agreements such as NAFTA for professionals and intra-company transferees, um, the first step for the employer in these cases would be to go to the IRCC employer portal and create a job offer, at which point the foreign worker can apply directly to IRCC for a work permit, or if they're visa exempt, actually just come and do that at the port of entry, either the land border into Canada or an airport. Next slide, please. There are resources available online to find out if your employee needs a labor market to work in the occupation that you have available for them. And uh, IRCC provides a unit to um, help assess that as well. So um, first check online. If you still can't figure out if you need an LMIA for your job, then go ahead and write to the International Mobility Worker Unit at the address you see on the screen. Next slide, please. Now, finally, on the um, 
on, on the work permit side, we've got the Global Skills Strategy, which is a new pilot program. It's going to be running for 24 months. It started last June, which is really to help make Canada and Canadian companies more competitive when it comes to attracting global talent. It's got several pillars, which you can see here, including a two-week service standard for processing work permit applications for highly skilled talent, so this would be at the managerial level as well as the professional level. It's also possible to bring in people for very, very short-term work, either 15 or 30 days, um, without a work permit at all. So there's an exemption for very short-term work to help companies meet deadlines. And for certain um, employers who are making a significant investment in Canada in terms of job creation or a financial investment, companies that are innovative and growing quickly and scaling up, uh, we have a dedicated service channel um, which provides um, personalized uh, assistance with navigating immigration programs to companies that are referred by our referral partners. Um, and then we finally have the uh, Global Talent Stream, which is an LMIA stream, um, which is managed by uh, Employment and Social Development Canada. ESTC, which provides for 10-day LMIA processing, that's very rapid, um, for employees um, who, who are in an occupation on a global talent uh, occupations list. These are uh, mostly tech occupations that are in shortage as well as in demand in Canada. And there's also a referral track there as well. So I won't go into too much more detail about this pilot, but there is a lot of information about it on the website as well. Next slide, please. Finally, uh, we're going to take a quick look at permanent immigration, specifically express entry, which is a system to manage all of the expressions of interest that have been made by people from around the world who would like to immigrate to Canada under one of our economic programs. It provides for um, for, for those with the highest, what we call, human capital to be selected and invited to apply for permanent residence, and it enables IRCC to process their applications very quickly within six months in about 80% of cases. Next slide, please. So there's just some highlights here. Um, anyone can go on and create a profile in the system for free. Um, this is a great way to help uh, skilled workers who are in Canada on work permits to transition to permanent residence. Um, they can create a profile and if they get enough points through the system, they can get permanent residence quite quickly. Next slide, please. This is step-by-step um, -step how it works. Um, Basically, the candidates just need to answer questions about their skills, work experience, language ability, education, et cetera. And if they meet the minimum eligibility criteria for one of the federal economic programs, they're accepted into the pool. And every two to three weeks, we do draws of the um, uh, candidates at the top of the pool, the highest scoring, and invite them to apply for immigration. Next slide. As an employer in Canada, you can support the application of anyone for permanent residence through express entry if you are willing to make them a job offer that is going to be for at least one year from the date on which they become a permanent resident. There's a lot of information about the job offer requirements um, on the RSCC website as well. There's a short summary of them on this slide that you can have a look at whenever you, you wish. Next slide, please. Okay, so just to give you an idea, um, all of the results of the invitation rounds are published. Um, on the IRCC website, canada.ca slash immigration. The most recent round, um, the results were that 3,000 candidates were invited to apply and the lowest ranked among them scored 456 points. So that just gives you an idea of how many points um, a candidate would require in order to be successful under express entry. Next slide. All right, so here's where you go for more information. Um, 
you can first of all visit the IRCC web page, the main page uh, or pages for each topic that's of interest to you. And um, within the IRCC website is also a very useful section of questions and answers called the Help Center. So I provided a link for that there. Once again, if you would like to be guided through uh, your options by an employer liaison officer such as myself, feel free to reach out to the EE engagement email address that you see there. For more information on Express Entry specifically, you can visit the links, uh, canada.ca slash Express Entry. I will be taking questions uh, at the end of this uh, webinar, so please send in your questions now. Thank you so much for your attention, and I, I hope that this has provided you with a valuable overview of the different options available to bring in foreign talent, either temporarily or permanently, to Canada. Thank you so much, Heather. That was a lot of really useful information. And as we will be sharing the PDFs with you, please do take the time to go and check the links that Heather has so helpfully provided in her presentation. I would now like to invite our next speaker, Caroline Berger, Project Manager Immigration and Employment with the Economic Development Society of BC. Through a new support service funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, Caroline connects BC companies with bilingual skilled talent. An immigrant herself, Caroline obtained an MBA from the Lyon Business School of Management in, in France. She's been working at SDECB since 2015, raising the awareness of local businesses about hiring Francophone and Francophile immigrants. Welcome, Caroline. Thank you very much, and uh, yes, thank you very much for giving me the um, opportunity uh, today to uh, present the SD and uh, the services of the SD. So, good morning, everyone. Everyone, my name is Caroline. I'm working at uh, the SDE. Um, today, I would like to present to you the francophone community as an option for your recruitment strategy. So, today, here is the agenda. Um, so first of all, I would like you to present um, who we are, what we do, and why is it a good opportunity to uh, recruit a Francophone immigrant? And then, um, what are the resources available to help you recruit a Francophone immigrant, such as our tools, our resources, and also the career focus program, and the Francophone mobility visa, such as Heather also mentioned during her presentation. So who we are, what are our services? So we are a non-profit organization. We have been, we were created in 1980, 1998, sorry. So this is the 20th anniversary this year. Uh, we are very proud of it. And um, we represent the French community in BC. We promote the economic development of BC through different services and activities. We support businesses workforce development, and community initiatives. So regarding our services, we have three main services. The first one, our um, first services, is to support entrepreneurship. So if we have, for instance, a Procophone person who would like to create a business or develop his network, we can help him with the business plan and the creation of the company. We also support different economic initiatives, such as uh, in tourism, Francophone uh, from BC in tourism, or also in agri-food. And we also have two other services. The first one is to help Francophone immigrants to find a job in BC. This program is financed by Service Canada. And the last one is, this is why we are here today, is to assist BC companies to recruit Francophone immigrants. So this specific program is financed by RRCC. We help all type of businesses, small businesses, large companies, all sectors um, of all activities, and it's across the province. So why hiring immigrants is, can be good for your business? Well, we are aware that there can be some challenges for the, uh, the company to think about the immigrant community as a recruitment opportunity. Sometimes the human resources can meet different challenges, such as where to find an immigrant, how to connect with immigrant communities, um, and where to search for immigrant talents. 
Another issue, how to access, assess their skills without investing too much in the process, or how to take time to recruit and integrate immigrants. And last uh, will be how to deal with the difference of culture. So this is why we are here, and this is how we can help you. So three main reasons to recruit a Francophone immigrant. Well, first of all, the level of education. As you can see in the picture, uh, it shows how, in, how interesting immigrant profile can be. So we can see, for instance, in BC, 34% of immigrants have certification, diploma, degrees, versus 20.4% of non-immigrants. So this trend is improving. In BC, we can see that 52.2% of non-immigrants have certificate, um, diplomas, degrees uh, since the past um, five years, and versus 24.5% of non-immigrants. So we can see that it shows that the Canada is welcoming great profile in the country, and this is a great for potential of recruitment. Second reason, motivation and efficiency at work. So you can see here an example in IT sector, the source of uh, BC uh, talent, BC. Um, well, you can see that the result of the survey for human resources who hired immigrants show that most of the hired immigrants have very good or good potential in terms of job performance <clears throat> or engagement with the company. They are motivated, they are thankful, they got an amazing job in the company. Their te technical skills, uh, they have high degree profile. They also learn fast and they improve um, really fast their work. And it's great fit also regarding uh, the cultural and personal profile. So recruiting immigrants is good, is a good investment. Third reason, diversity make a difference. So having a diverse team, diverse team can be profitable to your company for different reasons. Thanks to the different profile recruited, the company with a diverse team is more likely to have financial returns so we can see here 35 percent versus of um, a non-diverse company expand the market share five, 45 percent more and capture a new market because if for instance you recruit um, a french director with an amazing uh, network in quebec in europe it can be really good for your business why companies perform better well they attract best talent they understand the market better and they are more innovative because they have different way of well way of thinking so we discuss about immigrants in general but why specifically francophone well because it's easy to recruit a francophone immigrant first of all you can get access to specific employment grants to recruit qualified francophone candidates and then you can have access to specific uh, visa program such as the francophone mobility program to recruit francophone candidates and last but not least candidates with their family have access to our settlement and community service so they don't feel they feel welcome in the bc well first of all we we talked about why recruiting a francophone but now we can talk about how we can help you so what are the resources available to help you recruit a francophone immigrant. First of all, um, some tools that we have at the SME and resources. We can facilitate um, the company um, to have access to francophone talent in BC. We have a database of candidates, permanent residents, Canadian candidates. We can take your job offer, transfer the job offer to our network, to our candidates. And of course, send you qualified profiles. And well, of course, once we send you profiles, you can continue the recruitment process on your own. We, we provide also tools, resources to facilitate the recruitment and the integration of francophone immigrants. We inform you with um, available grants, such as career focus program. We're going to discuss about that after. <coughs> we connect you with our partners um, of the francophone community. They have access also to qualified candidates, so this is another opportunity for you to have access to profile. 
Um, and we can inform you regarding Francophone community events and our events as well. There are events in Victoria, in Vancouver. We also created a speed jobbing event in partnership with ICBC um, last November, for instance. So the format is pretty interesting. It's like a speed dating format. You have five minutes interviews, um, specific profile, specific agenda with um, the candidates you will meet. And of course, no lineup in front of uh, your booth. So it's kind of an interesting format. Um, and we're going to do another one this year on um, October, so we will keep you posted. Uh, and we also organize every year virtual job fairs, so it's a good opportunity for you to find interesting profiles that are still abroad. Another tool that we created in partnership with ICBC is our toolkit. So this toolkit gives you several tips on how to recruit a Francophone immigrant. You can see two main parts in this mail tool um, when you click on the link. So the first one is regarding the sectors. So as you can see, different sectors and what is the evolution of these sectors in terms of employment? So they, it will give you um, where will be your needs from now until 2025. 2025. The second part is regarding team sheets. So how to grow your business, how to connect with talented immigrants, how to hire talented immigrants and how to retain them. So this tool is pretty simple and pretty useful. The other information I would like to share with you today is our career focus program. So this year we are gonna organize the third edition starting on July, 2018. So this is a wage subsidy financed by Service Canada. And it's if you would like to recruit a Francophone bilingual candidate. So bilingual, English and French, of course. The grant is around $8,000 and $400 per candidate, which represents $15 per hour for 35 hours per week for 16 weeks. And of course, we support you also regarding finding the correct candidate for your job offer. What type of candidates are eligible? Well, they have to be aged between 15 and 30 years old. They are Canadian, permanent resident or refugees, so no issue with any visa in this program and they have to speak French and English but no label required and it doesn't need, need, need that the job position will require French. The candidate also has not to receive employment insurance. What job offer is eligible? Well, all type of job position, all type of sector, so pretty flexible. Um, for full-time job only, minimum 35 hours per week minimum 16 weeks, and it's based in Greater Vancouver or Victoria. So how does it work? Well, it's pretty simple, two options. We can help you find it, a candidate with our database, or you can come to us and say, hey, I already found the perfect candidate for this job offer. So we just need to validate that the candidate is eligible, and that's it. You just uh, sign with us an agreement, which the description of the job offer, the salary and everything, and, and we can start. Uh, there is only two follow-ups during the work experience and in order to know if everything is going well for you and the candidates. I wanted also to present um, the Francophone Mobility Program. So um, either had the opportunity to present a little, so I will go quick on this program. So Francophone Mobility Program is which aims to facilitate the recruitment of skilled Francophone workers. Um, there are different eligible positions for this program. Uh, they have to be uh, in the different three categories of the NOC classification, such as management position, professional position and technical jobs, so only skilled position. This is the employer specific work permit and it's valid for the duration of the job offer. As you can see, lots of advantages of uh, this uh, program, such as no labor market impact assessment, or um, there is this is open to any nationality, no age limits, the permit is renewable, uh, the job offer doesn't need also to have someone who will use French for the job offer. And it's great also for the retention of the candidate because he can have, thanks to this program, another <coughs> permit for the, the schools. Our, the minors are permitted to attend Canadian primary or secondary school. There's no commitment, so if 
it doesn't work with the candidate, you can change. There's also a short lead time, three weeks processing, but of course it depends on the um, citizenship and the country of the candidates. You can check directly on the website of IRCC. The cost is only $230, so it's pretty cheap. And of course, then again, our service of settlement and community service is here to help the candidates and his family to be welcome in BC and stay in BC. The checklist again, so check if the candidate is speaking French, if the job offer is outside of Quebec, and make sure if it's a skilled position. And then sign an employment contract with your candidate. And what, once it's done, just apply online on the employer portal. If you have any questions, feel free, of course, to ask either. And then you can also call me, contact me if you have any questions. If the candidate has a question, he can contact the Immigration Francophone Program of BC. For more information, visit the website of IRCC. Thank you so much for your time and feel free to visit our um, social network if you have any questions as well. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Caroline. That was really, really informative. It's now my pleasure to invite our guest all the way from Ottawa, Rob Henderson. Rob is the president and CEO of BioTalent Canada, and he's a strong advocate of the importance of talent in driving the national innovation agenda. <clears throat> He firmly believes that without people, there is no science. BioTalent Canada, the organization that Rob leads, has a long track record of successful implementation of many different programs for uh, internationally educated professionals, as well as other wage subsidy programs. Over the next four years, BioTalent will be dispersing over $10.3 million in wage subsidies to create 1,400 additional job placements in Canada's bioeconomy. Welcome, Rob, and over to you. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank ICBC, ICBC for inviting me today and how much I learned from our first two presenters. Um, I'm here to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities that can be presented for newcomers within the bioeconomy. Um, so a little bit about Biotalents Canada. We are uh, essentially the HR partner for Canada's bioeconomy, which is commonly known as Canada's biotechnology industry. So we do a lot of work with uh, biotech and HR, and I've got to tell you, it can be a little dry at times, uh, dealing with skills profiles and job descriptions and many things like that. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about putting a face on what we do. About five years ago, when I was working in Ottawa at uh, the Biotalent Canada National Office, um, we were working particularly late on a current project, and I went uh, out into the street looking for some food. And I wandered into a shawarma place down um, near downtown Ottawa. And um, this gentleman served me from the back of the counter, from the back of the counter, who was, uh, and uh, he was asking me why I was working so late. So then I told him exactly what I was doing, that I was finding some jobs, alternative career pathways for newcomers. And he said, really? And he was fascinated by this. And he told me, he asked me what I was doing. Uh, and he said, and, uh, I said, uh, I said, uh, many newcomers come into the, into the country with skills and talent and sometimes they are not able to practice their chosen profession or the profession for which they were educated in their original country. So he said, um, he said, really, how do you do this? So I explained it to him a little bit about some of the programs that we had and particularly the bioskills recognition program, which I will go into in a moment. And he said, well, that's fascinating. And I said, why? And he goes, because I'm a cardiologist. Uh, and he was working in a shawarma place as a chef, which is obviously a noble profession, but it wasn't exactly what he was educated for. So what was really nice is his name was Dr. Ahmad. Dr. Ahmad, I'm pleased to say, went through the Bioskills Recognition Program and became a project manager for a lab laboratory in Montreal. So he, we have so many success stories of this, and we have to we remind ourselves of these each day because we realize sometimes we're being bogged down with things like wage subsidies and bureaucracies that we're helping real people, and we're, uh, we're improving the economy and the lives of Canadians in doing it. Um, so that's a little bit of what we do. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what the bioeconomy is or the biotech industry in Canada. Most people confuse biotechnology with really just the pharmaceutical industry, which is often uh, the one that's referred to because it certainly employs the most amount of people, certainly in Canada. Uh, but the pharmaceutical industry is part of only one of the four subsectors we identify as constituting the bioeconomy, and that's the biohealth sector. They employ probably around 85 to 90% of all uh, employees in Canada. 
However, there are three more vibrant subsectors, even more vibrant subsectors that we're in Canada, and that's agrobiotech, which is agriculture and genome research, plant genetics, etc. Bioenergy, of which Canada is emerging as a world leader, and the bioindustrial sector, which is also burgeoning. So these are all uh, constitute opportunities and companies that uh, are great, uh, are phenomenal potential for newcomers. So a little bit about Canada's bioeconomy. 80% are small or medium-sized enterprises, or SMEs, which means they are less than 50 employees. Many of them are less than 10 employees. The products that we have are highly regulated, obviously, because they're consumed by human beings. However, the professions are not, unless you're a pharmacist or a doctor working in the profession, um, where most of the professions are not regulated or licensed in any kind, which means that they're based on skills profiles, uh, not necessarily uh, no licensing body, uh, governs those types of professions. Now we are the most educated industry probably around, in other words, anybody who's going to be doing innovation usually has to have a master's or PhD in order to be able to do that. However, as a result, because we have so many small and medium-sized enterprises, most of these people are not trained in HR. So we have typically very poor human resources because we have scientists doing our HR management, which is akin to getting a plumber to do your taxes. So uh, unfortunately, it's one of the challenges that we have. And it's something that you need to know and the newcomers need to face uh, in terms of being able to position their skills within uh, this industry. So a few statistics. 53% of companies currently in Canada's bioeconomy currently report skill shortages. There is not an average of 19.5% of new graduate unemployment. That's a huge amount of competition. Um, the reason that is, is that the only thing that is greater than a, a talent gap or a talent challenge for these companies is the fact that they have uh, challenges for access to capital. So as much as we do have talent, they often do not have the capital to employ them, which is why the wage subsidy programs that we employ and that the federal government and provincial governments support are so critical. 60% of science grads are women right now in Canada of the new tech, so, which is great because it shows a very, very, um, th th that figure has uh, grown markedly over the last 35 years. So it shows that um, one of the underrepresented groups within the bioeconomy is actually women, even though 60% of the science grads are them. We welcomed 300,000 Canadian immigrants in 2017, and only, but only 5.7% employ disabled Canadians within the Canadian biotech, uh, biotech industry. And that is low compared to other industries. I put this out to show this is, these are the this is the, these are the facts and the statistics that make up the bioeconomy and some of the competition that newcomers face when presenting themselves as prospective new employees. So, a few years ago, we actually uh, surveyed many biotech companies who actively employed newcomers, and we asked them what their experience was. Um, this is important because it's. Uh, these give opportunities for newcomers to demonstrate their um, uh, themselves as opportunities for employers. Fifty-two percent of the company who hired of the companies surveyed who hired newcomers reported improved innovation. Forty-three percent reported improved productivity, and twenty-nine percent reported better access to foreign markets. So this is very much in keeping with Carolyn's uh, uh, presentation just a little while ago, showing how much opportunity um, the newcomer market presents as a strategically important labor market. And this is important for newcomers to remember. Alternative biotech career paths. One of the things that we have is a lot of international professionals that come into Canada are not, some of them are licensed in medical professions. Some of them have alternative scientific, scientific careers or technological careers. And they're not able to necessarily uh, work in their given field. So this, uh, this um, posed a challenge to us several years ago of since most of our careers are, are based on skills map, mapping as opposed to regula regulatory bodies, how do we position alternative career paths in biotechnology to these educated professionals um, in, in helping them overcome their biggest challenge, which is the Canadian experience barrier that we found? Because um, most, of the, uh, most of the newcomers that we have surveyed and uh, spoke to anecdotally and statistically, have stated that being asked to provide Canadian experience is one of their biggest challenges in terms of being able to position themselves uh, as a prospective employee. So what we did is we created the BioSkills Recognition Program. This is an online program, and it's available in both official languages, so Francophone immigrants can also uh, access it well. Um, what uh, this asks people to do is to log in and to put in their work history, including their education, 
all the skills, the years that they've worked in certain tasks, and the kinds of skills that they've accrued. This gets entered into and uh, the BioSkills Transfer Tool, which is an online application that we have developed. And what it does is it maps the skills that the newcomer um, adds into the, uh, into the database to one of 34 different skills profiles that we have developed as industry standards. Once they are matched up between the two, the skills portfolio, the entire package, is transferred to an actual Canadian industry representative who's either worked or is working uh, in that skills profile uh, for which they are evaluating. Then, if the skills that the newcomer presents matches up adequately with the skills profile that has been developed, that person is labeled bio-ready for that skills profile or that position within Canada's bioeconomy. Now, something you need to know is that it is not a certification or an accreditation. Um, it is simply an industry verification, and it's there simply to help newcomers overcome their primary challenge of saying, well, you don't have any Canadian experience. Yes, but Biotalent Canada has labeled me bio-ready for this skills profile. So it's a Canadian industry verification. In 2017 alone, we had 256 BioReady candidates that went through the program and, and, and attained the BioReady designation. And currently, we have 16 um, um, small and mid-sized companies across Canada uh, who have stated uh, that they would preferentially accept BioReady candidates who apply for these positions. Now, that sounds like a low number in terms of 16 companies accepting. Those are the ones that we've asked to incorporate into their HR pl pl platform. There are many other companies that are currently uh, considering BioReady candidates. Uh, some of them, because again, most of them are small and medium sized mm -hmm. enterprises, their HR program isn't advanced enough to make sure that they can completely conform to that. But that number is growing, and companies in biotech are recognizing these as a strategically valuable labor force. Something we did last year was we, um, we surveyed the 256 candidates, as well as 33 different immigrant serving agencies that have been working with them, and as well as uh, the 16 companies that are accepting BioReady candidates. And we uh, compiled the results in this um, uh, labor market report, which is free online on our website, biotalent.ca. Um, and it, uh, it cataloged their experiences, um, anecdotally, and what immigrant serving agencies and employers are facing in terms of trying to um, to uh, fast track newcomers into alternative career paths or careers, primary careers within the Canadian bioeconomy. So the biggest challenge, as we said, was overcoming Canadian experience, experience the Canadian experience question, which is uh, tell us what Canadian-based industry experience do you have. The other challenges for newcomers is approaching small companies because these companies don't typically use Indeed or Workopolis or something like that to advertise their, their, uh, their jobs. It's the business of biotech, which is just as important. Schools and universities teach a great deal of the science of biotech, but the business of biotech is often an afterthought. Um, so more, the more that newcomers can show that they understand that or bring that to the market um, in terms of some of the opportunities we, we showed you, uh, earlier, then that's uh, that's a great opportunity for them. The hidden job market: many small and medium-sized enterprises only call a small um, call or contact a small uh, network to say that they have a job opportunity, and often newcomers are not part of that network. Mm -hmm. Soft skills: presentation, being able to uh, run a meeting, project management, financial acumen, all of these things, soft skills that are uh, so important to the bio, the, bio, uh, the biotech industry. And finally, turning challenge into opportunities to get the newcomers out of the mindset that hiring a newcomer is a detriment, and instead saying you can open up new markets, enhance innovation, enhance the fact that inclusion and diversity is an opportunity uh, for and, and a competitive one for a business, not something that uh, people, uh, that is just something nice to do for an underrepresented group. So with that, because we had such good success with the BioReady or the BioSkills Recognition Program and with the BioReady candidates that we have instituted, we've uh, launched a pilot project with uh, ESDC, which is the uh, Department of Employment and Social Development Canada. It was launched in August of 2017. Currently, it's just 35 subsidized positions for newcomers with the BioReady designation, and we can give up to a $15,000 range sub subsidy up to six months. This is very important for biotech companies because, as I said, one of their biggest challenges is access to capital. So newcomers who can attain the BioReady designation and who can apply for positions stating that they come with a pre, 
uh, pre-qualification of a $15,000 wage subsidy, that's a great competitive advantage for them. It is a pilot project with ESDC, and we were chosen because of our uh, the Bioskills Recognition Program and the opportunities it presents as an alternative career pathway solution. So we are hoping, with the success of this program, that it will be expanded in the coming years as ESDC and the federal government continue to struggle and to look for opportunities to find uh, lucrative and economically viable uh, career paths for those 300,000 uh, newcomers that we uh, attract every year. This is Elizabeth Velasque. Uh, Elizabeth I met here in Vancouver about three years ago. I was at a trade show, uh, and she was lovely. Uh, we went to do a biotech trade show, and I was introduced. Uh, she was asking, she found out that somebody from Biotalent Canada was at the, at the conference, and uh, they were, she, introduced, they were, she was introduced to me. She immediately, instead of shaking my hand, hand leapt into my arms and gave me a hug. Um, and those of you who know biotech, it's not usually that warm and fuzzy in the industry. <laughs> so I was rather surprised. She told me her story. Uh, she was a Peru she's a Peruvian originally from Lima and got a master's degree uh, there at a Lima University, but found out that she could not practice what her passion was, which was science uh, in Lima. So she went like any researcher would do, went online and did some research, found out that there was a country that had jobs skills profiles, all sorts of things that she wanted where she thought she could practice her profession. So she packed up her bags, flew to Vancouver, and promptly within six months of uh, landing, got a job as a project manager within Semios Bio, which is a, uh, uh, a Vancouver um, medium-sized biotech company. Um, so she's telling me all of this, and I said, that's you know, great. And she says, yes, and she says, now I'm, I'm moving to Eastern Canada because I met someone I fell in love and I'm engaged to be married. And I said, oh, uh, are you going to have to give up your job? And she said, no, Semios has recognized my skills so much, they appreciate me so much that they're extending, they're allowing me to work remotely. Um, so she proved herself as, as that great opportunity of, of enhancing the diversification and inclusion of a company, but showing that it was a competitive advantage at the same time. So I said, Why, what does this have to do with me? And she said, well, she says, I just want to thank you because it was Biotalent Canada's website that I found. And she says, so she says, I just want to thank you for letting, uh, helping me get, helping me have all my dreams come true. Uh, so I wanted to end my presentation with that just to say again, we're helping real people here and we make an impact. And uh, so I hope this presentation has helped you know a little bit more about what we do in our little microcosm of the biotech industry in Canada. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I'd be pleased to answer them. Um, I know you're going to get a copy of this um, uh, presentation after the fact. Uh, and I guess now I'll be uh, with everyone else uh, answering any questions you might have. Thank you very much for your attention today. Thank you so much, Rob, for your wonderful presentation. Um, just very quickly, want to give you a bit of a, we have a partnership with the Biotalent Canada as well uh, for our pre-arrival service, and it's been fantastic to see candidates that are still overseas uh, go through our pre-arrival and then get connected to uh, to BioTalent and to the BioSkills Recognition Program and get their BioReady designation even before they land in Canada. And I think the more we can start doing these uh, kind of opportunities to prepare people even before they get here, we're giving them a head start. So thank you so much for the work that each of you does in connecting BC employers um, and employers across Canada actually with uh, skilled talent. So now is the time for questions. Uh, for those of you that do have any questions, please 